Mr. Ruthless Robbie Lawler. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, not so bad. Thank you for asking. Uh, so your violent style of fighting is 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 so brutal. It's it's ruthless. So how did you even get the name, the nickname Ruthless? Where did that even come about? Uh, actually, uh, Dana said I needed a nickname. So he just kind of like thought of one and I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm here to fight. I don't really care about nicknames. So it's just like, but yeah, he, he picked Ruthless and we just ran with it. Really? So Dana White was the guy that came up with that. Interesting. Yep. It was his idea. So I was like, okay. Okay. Uh, well, it's perfect. I mean, it fits and it kind of, it has a little ring to it. Uh, so you've been in the game for quite some time and, you know, everyone deals with a certain level of stress or a certain level of, I guess, fear going into a fight. And since you've put in so much time over the years, um, for you, would you say the nerves are the same as they were when you first started or have, how have they changed in any kind of way? Uh, no, I mean, it's different. It it, it all comes down to how you're paired, uh, like what your status is in life and how, how you're feeling. So it's like, are you excited or are you nervous? I mean, like when I'm at my best, I'm excited. It, it's, they're very similar, but excited is a little different than nervous. Excited is I'm going out there ready to showcase my skills and like do my thing. I, I put in the right amount of work. So that's where I'm at and that's when I'm at my best is when I'm excited. Okay. And you've, you've always been in shape. You've always showed up ready. Like how, you know, over the years, a 20 plus, 20 plus year career, how have you remained so disciplined for so long? Um, I, I enjoy working out. Uh, I enjoy taking care of my body and, uh, fine tuning. So like, that's what, sports all about uh, it's about fine-tuning and figuring out ways to make things easier for you a little bit of extra work here a little less work there and it's just fine-tuning for every fight fine-tuning for your age finding tuning your workload so that you can recover so it's uh and having the right people around you to help you with those things getting massages doing ice baths or whatever having coaches telling you hey rest don't do anything or me telling my coaches, Hey, <laughs> I'm not doing shit today. So, uh, it's, it's just finding that balance and, uh, making it work. And, you know, basically your entire adult life has been competing. Um, and, you know, loving to work out, I guess is definitely a bonus. Um, but beyond that, I mean, you have to stay on a specific diet. You have to really be conscious of what you're putting into your body. I mean, you became a world champion at middleweight and you became a world champion at welterweight. Uh, has there ever been a time where you haven't had to be on your diet at all or you haven't had to watch what you've been taking in as far as food and drinks go? I mean, obviously when I was younger, I mean, I could just eat whatever I wanted, wouldn't put on very much weight. But as I've gotten older, it's all right, how can I finally tune this machine so I don't have, it doesn't take so long to recover and I can perform optimally. So it's just, once again, trying to find that balance. And then it's different stages in life, different training camps, different, like, let's say you're focusing more on cardio, you're eating a certain way for that. If you're focusing more on strength, then you have to eat a little bit more protein. So it's just finding that correct balance and making sure you, you feel, uh, feel good. I mean, what works for me isn't going to work for everyone else. So it's just, uh, every individual is different and it's having the discipline and you're almost like your own science experiment and, and, and really only, you know, how you feel, you feel great. If you're not like a coach can push you and push you and push you, but they don't, they don't know if you feel like shit. So, so like, like you, you, you have know. to communicate. Do you like track your own calories or just no, no, I do not track my own calories. I mean, that's a, I've, I've messed around with it a little bit just because I want to check out my macros a little bit, but I don't try to get, I try to make it fun still. So I, for a while I wasn't taking supplements just because I was like, oh, this has become work and it's not fun. So it's just like finding that balance where I'm enjoying it a little bit of this, a little bit of that. 
trying to figure it out. Uh, so last time we talked, um, you told me about you were doing the Kill Cliffs and how part of your supplement routine is adding in the CBD and, and things of that nature. Would you say that's one of the ways you kind of keep away from the sugars? Because I know that can be real detriment to weight cuts. Uh, yeah, but I'm not too much worried uh, sugar. It's more calories and just taking the right calories. In. But uh, Kill Cliff, one thing it helps me with recovery, gets me... Uh, with a little bit of vitamin and ginseng, you don't have the crash because of the uh, the green tea caffeine is a little a little, little cleaner, burns a little smoother, and and you don't have that crash and uh, uh the, and they taste great too. So you have that little pick me up of that great taste. And uh, yeah, I mean, in between workouts, get me going, and uh, yeah, but that's about it. I mean. I try not to uh, get too crazy with my uh, diet so much. Um, I mean, I, I eat healthy, but it's just kind of like a way of life. But I don't definitely don't count my calories, and it's all by feel. Do you think you'll continue on with the same sort of diet once you, you've hung up the gloves and you're far removed from competing? Do you think you'll still continue that lifestyle? Yeah, I think I. I wouldn't doubt it'll be a little bit more extreme because I mean, I don't have anything to like, I mean, I could do water fast, you know, there's so many different things you can do. And if you don't have anything to, uh, I just like testing myself, seeing how, how my body, uh, recovers and just, I'm trying to be healthy. So it's like, if I, I can, uh, zap my body and keep it from eating and just like, sometimes when you're, not eating it's good for your body too so i mess around with that i do a little bit of fasting intermittent fasting too but it's uh yeah i'll just continue to do this because it's it's a way of life for me and i enjoy it and, and that's why i've been able to do this for so long i i enjoy the the nuances of training and eating and taking care of my body and it's definitely something that i'm interested in uh, well, coming up, UFC 276, July 2nd, you're taking on Brian Barbarina. Uh, is this the first time you've ever been on the prelims? No, nah, I've been on prelims before. I mean, but like, I'm always the main event. That's that's always my mind. So it doesn't matter. I wish I was first fight of the night so I can get in there, put on a show and get out of there. Then why don't be like two people in the stand? But really it doesn't matter. You just got to go out there and compete. And, uh, I'm excited. And, but I think it's been a while since I've been on the prelims, but I don't really keep track. I don't really uh, care. So I was talking with George St. Pierre a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying how he thinks like, if you're someone who's been around for the company for, you know, X amount of years, then you should probably still be getting some of the paper viewpoints and some of that revenue that that the big cards kind of produce you you think uh that should be the case um obviously uh george is doing a great job of trying to get these fighters more money and it'd be nice uh i mean we've done a lot for this sport and uh yeah definitely a way to get fighters more money i'm more for that uh last time we spoke you were telling me uh how that Nick Diaz rematch really got you fired up and excited. It had you motivated to want to come out and put on a show. And now you're fighting Brian Barbarena, who was solid and all, but do you feel like you have to find some extra motivation to kind of get up for this one? No, it's, it's all about just being disciplined and using that momentum from my last fight and, and trying to keep that going. Uh, sticking to the bases, basics working on simple things and, and uh, just being sharp. And uh, my training partners at Sanford, Sanford MMA have done a great job of helping me and uh, making sure I'm sharp and pushing me. I mean, if, if you don't go in there and you're not clicking on all cylinders, you can get beat up fast. So uh, my body feels great. And uh, I've been training with some of the best in the world. Now, it's no secret what you come to do. I mean, you come to bang. Do you expect him to try to wrestle and clinch up and neutralize you in some sort of way? Or do you think he'll actually engage in a prolonged stand-up battle? Um, I'm ready for everything. So it doesn't really matter. I, I mean, I'm ready for stand-up. I'm ready for wrestling. That's, I mean, that's, we're an MMA, so you can't just like 
throw caution to the wind and you have to be ready for everything. So you have to be sharp and I'm sharp. Uh, my coaches have done a great job of getting me ready and training partners have pushed me in all aspects of, of the fight game. So let's go. I'm ready. Uh, how many more fights do you have left on your contract? Doesn't matter. I mean, there's one fight at a time. So uh, we'll see uh, what's in store, but we'll get through this fight and then focus on the next one. But I have a few more. Uh, and how long do you plan on competing? I mean, you've been in the sport for so long. And I mean, we're seeing guys like Glover Teixeira winning titles late in his career. We've seen guys like Randy Couture come back and win titles. I mean, the, the, we, we, everyone always says it's a young man's game, but constantly, time and time again, we keep seeing veterans just rise to the top. I mean, how long do you think you can actively continue to fight at this sort of level? We'll see. I mean, just listening to my body, listening and just, and just training hard. And as long as I can compete at a high level and, and I'm excited to go out there and, and, and fight, I'll continue to do it. Uh, just something I love to do and been doing it for a long time and I enjoy it. Yeah. You've paid your dues. That's for sure. And then some, do you, uh, you think you would ever see yourself in, in one of the novelty fights after your UFC career, maybe doing like a boxing match with someone or a grappling event or anything like that? I don't really know. I mean, just concentrate on this fight and then we'll see where the road takes us. I mean, that's what's fun about life. You never know where, where it's going to go and the opportunities that are going to come up. Uh, and you, you have so many finishes on your record and you know, I have I have this idea that maybe the UFC should do away with the win bonus and just double the show money and then replace performance bonuses with finishing bonuses, keeping fight of the night, of course. But do you think that that would maybe promote more finishes and, and prevent guys from kind of playing it safe? No, because I think guys maybe a little bit, but I think guys are fighting to their strengths. You don't want guys who their strength isn't isn't banging going out there and getting their head chopped off because they're trying to make this money to pay for something they don't really need. Stay within your means and, and fight with the skill set that you have. And I mean, good things will happen for you, but like you don't want guys like doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing just to make a little extra money and then put on a show for the fans or maybe you do but me personally I'm like hey fight your game and get a W yeah I mean I definitely respect that uh it would be nice if everyone had the same kind of style as Robbie Lawler I will say that <laughs> um but I mean yeah but but my style fits my skill set that's the thing you I mean if a guy's not a freaking power puncher you want him standing up and if he's a wrestler and a jiu-jitsu guy you want him standing up and banging with somebody like me if you know stick to what you do best and 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 try to get those w's and that's what the sport's all about finding your niche and taking advantage of it and that actually reminds me of uh one of your protégés logan storley who stuck to his guns and now he just captured bellator's interim welterweight title doing exactly what you said you know he he's not out there to to for anything other than to play his game and win and it, it seemed to pay off for him so how's yeah that's it's great but that that's what the sport's all about like every like it'd be nice if everyone like go out there and but that's not his skill set he's working on those aspects i've i've fought for 22 years full time and before that, I was doing martial arts. I mean, and look at MVP. I mean, who? how long has he been doing martial arts? He's a stand-up guy, too. It makes sense for Logan to grab him, throw him down, and make it boring and not exciting. I mean, it's all about winning. And, and in the end, like, that's where longevity is, not staying within your means, doing what you need to do to get the job done. Are you, are you really enjoying coaching? Do you think that's something you're going to see yourself doing pretty much forever? I mean, that's, that's what this, what I think sports all about is like uh, at some point in time, people showed me skills and different aspects and helped me out. And, and that's, I think it's my job to give back and uh, 
make life a little bit easier for these fighters. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun. It's, I'm a decent, uh, assistant coach going there. Hey, maybe in this position, just do this, like those types of things. And, uh, it's fun. Would you say you get more nervous for your guys that are fighting than you do for your own fights? Uh, no, I don't really get nervous anymore. I mean, I get excited for my fights. I don't, I don't think I really get nervous for anybody else anymore. It's just kind of like, it's, it's out of my control. So like, whatever, like get the guy ready and, and then coach him up and try to stay like sometimes when you're coaching out there, if you're nervous for the guy, then it comes across when you're coaching, you need to stay calm and like, make sure your message is getting uh, presented in a way that uh, the guy can understand and it's relaxed. And sometimes you need to be the calm one in, in the corner and at the fight. So never know. That's huge. And, and that's why some guys might be great fighters, but they might not be great trainers or teachers or coaches. And it's little details like that, that uh, I think is part of what makes a really good coach. Um, do, do you ever see yourself like maybe as a, a head coach, as like the main, the main guy with a, a stable of your own fighters? I mean, actually it really doesn't matter as long as I'm giving back, like, like everyone has different coaches like they might have a striking coach they might have a wrestling coach they might have an all-around coaches but at any given time that wrestling coach might be the main coach for that fight you, you never know like who needs to step up and and be a bigger part of the camp or a certain fight or a certain guy to get him to the next level so it's i would say head coach is more like a like a uh would be more like an ego thing it's like i'm just i'm just a part of somebody's journey and like if i can give them a little piece that helps them succeed that's what it's all about and i think uh that's what sports all about call me head coach call me assistant coach call me the freaking bucket holder it doesn't really matter just like helping out man that's such a humble outlook uh and I, I feel like humility is, is something that's been steadily slipping away from the sport. Um, before you call it a career, would you ever want like a super fight with anyone? Maybe like just, just something that isn't maybe just a regular fight, maybe like a Conor McGregor or someone in a different weight class, or is there any specific fight that you would, you would like to get in before you call it a career? I mean, obviously, if a super fight needs more money, <laughs> let's do it. Like, I mean, I'm clicking on all cylinders. Training camp went really well, but I have to get through this fight, first of all. And then uh, bigger things are going to happen. Uh, but, yeah, always looking for bigger and better things. And we'll see what happens. My management, UFC, will figure that out. Yeah, I think Dana White recently came out and said uh, Nate Diaz should just go box Jake Paul, even though he's still under contract. Would you even be open to anything along those lines? Oh, for sure. For sure. I don't, I'm not into like uh, what anyone's saying. So like all this is like news to me. I don't really follow the, the sport and as far as what everyone's saying. So I, that's, that's news to me. Awesome. Uh, well, who are you, some of your sponsors or any special people you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, Kill Cliff, Get Biofuel, uh, Black Rifle Coffee. Like, those are my big sponsors taking care of us and they're taking care of me. And uh, I'm definitely blessed to still have sponsors and uh, people who want to be a part of my career. You ever miss the days of the fight shorts covered with all the sponsorship logos or do you prefer the uniforms? Oh, come on now. Like I liked how everyone had their own little swag going. Some guys patches are falling off. Some guys like big sponsors. You'd be looking at the guy's shorts. Like, What's he have? Like, that's fun. That was fun to me. Like it was like NASCAR. Like everyone was different. And uh, yeah, I, I think that was, a lot better than 
what they have now. You think we'll ever get back to that, or do you think uniforms are kind of here? Uh, I mean, there's you mean in the UFC, right? Right, right, right. Uh, it doesn't look that way because uh, they have these deals with venom and looks like they might have a deal with under armor shoes to the rock or something so it doesn't look that way but bellator still does it these other uh organizations still do it so these i would say more or less what that hurts is kind of like the the smaller fighter or the up-and-coming fighters because a lot of their stuff they were getting free stuff like chiropractic work maybe massages like those types of things and they might not be getting those types of things but i mean give and take right that's what the sports figure out a way to uh adapt and and get the job done is what it comes down to so improvise yeah i mean i remember the guys like taking the sharpie and writing their sponsor like (laughs) back like those were the days man uh, well, how can people follow you on your journey? What are your social media outlets, your Instagram, Twitter, things like that? Uh, my Instagram's ruthless underscore RL. And I think my Twitter might be that too. I I don't know because I'm not much in the social media. So I feel you. Well, Robbie, yeah. thank you so much for taking out the time to speak with me. Brian Barbarena is in your crosshairs, UFC 276 on July 2nd. Have fun out there. Thank you.